Hey guys, welcome to the new Porsche Taycan Turbo. Firstly, no, it doesn't feature a turbocharger, even though the badge on the back clearly says turbo. Why? Well, as anyone who knows their Porsches will tell you, the turbo badge is usually applied to the flagship model. In this case, you can actually get a Turbo S model as well, which is a little bit more powerful. And that's probably, well, that is the flagship model. But the slightly confusing badge aside, this is a fully electric car. There are no petrol engines anywhere here. You've got two electric motors on the turbo, one at the back, one at the front, providing four wheel drive and combined a whopping 500 kilowatts of power during what they call overboost for short periods. If you step up to the Turbo S, it shoots up to 560 kilowatts making it one of the most powerful production Porsches ever made. Just quickly, we'll talk about the design. I really like the design. Uh, it looks a lot like the Mission concept car that they brought out a few years ago, um, except this is, you know, made for, for production. So it's got normal mirrors, side mirrors and things like that. Normal size wheels, although these are 21 inch on this specific model. Um, but yeah, I think it really looks really good. It does look like a Porsche. It looks quite distinctive. Um, you've got a bit of a, a Cayman uh, at the front end there, slightly 911 with the, the big sort of pouncing front guards, and then around at the back is de very definitely a uh, typical Porsche, very fat rear haunches, almost completely horizontal um, rear guards there, and then yeah, very imposing looking rear end. It does look kind of funny with no exhaust at the back. Um, but I do like these little fins here, even though they are fake, they don't actually go through. It gives it a sort of futuristic uh, theme to it. We've got Goodyear Eagle uh, F1 tyres, which is a pretty bit of a change for Porsche. They usually go with Michelins. Um, they provide heaps of grip, especially off the mark. When you remember that this has got 500 kilowatts, um, you'll be amazed just how well it gets off the line. So as we go through this drive, um, I want you to sort of keep in mind that I'm not really a fan of electric cars. Um, so for all the traditional Porsche fans out there who are worried um, about going electric, um, I'm going to be giving my opinion based on that I don't actually like electric cars. I just like the mechanical attention to detail of, of, of the combustion engine, you know, so many moving parts, um, the noises, the emotion, you know, you've got the engine revving up. Just don't get that with an electric car it's, it's almost silent to start with though let's just quickly check out the interior so this is a sedan um, although it's probably more of a four-door coupe with a big swooping roof line going down at the back there um, but it's pretty big in terms of dimensions inside it's definitely very sporty firstly you've got that trademark almost vertical steering wheel um, it's actually in the comfort access mode so it does actually come down when i start the car um, but yeah, definitely very Porsche. The flat and almost horizontal uh, dash on the, on the passenger side, also very Porsche. And we guess the sort of cleanness of it all is uh, pretty typical of the brand as well. Um, hidden behind all this black is uh, are actual touchscreens. So they've done some interesting stuff there by making the design look very clean when it's turned off. Um, but then when you start it all up, all these functions and, and, and you know, controls appear out of you know, basically nowhere. Excellent attention to detail in here. Um, I love this sort of, it's, you probably can't see it on camera, but it's kind of like a titanium, almost bronzy color. You might be able to see it in the sun, um, but it's metallic. It matches the, uh, the vents around there and also the little gear, gear lever stub there. Um, and then more around the, uh, the steering wheel, the cup holders and things like that. I think it really ties in as a, as a very suave, milled from a solid chunk of aluminium type feel to it. The steering wheel won't, won't move when you've got it in park. You have to actually select D and then the power steering becomes available. Um, but yeah, awesome steering wheel, awesome driving position. I, I can't really complain at all there. If anything, you might have to get used to the almost vertical steering wheel if you're not used to that, because um, a lot of cars out today are slightly tilted forward. But yeah, very Porsche in-car feel here. The fully digital instrument cluster, um, 
I'm not a fan of, of, of totally digital things, um, especially dials. I like to, I sort of appreciate the mechanical attention to detail of a, of a dial with little moving parts and things. But you know, that's just the way these days, everyone's, everyone's got them. So all the manufacturers, I think, like to jump on board and, and try and beat each other. This one is pretty good though. You got, it's, it's kind of curved to wrap around. Um, it's just got these hidden sections on the side, which you sort of have to move your head to see or access. Uh, this is for your lighting and on this side for your driving functions. So you're like your, your shock, your adaptive dampers, um, adjustable ride height. So this has got air suspension. Um, you can change the two uh, dials on the, on the right, left and right. Not sure if you can see that. Um, just using this little wheel here. So you go across to the left and it, it sort of highlights it and you can change around tire info. Um, I've, all, wheel, all wheel drive, see where the power is going. Um, and I've just got it on G-Force, and you can hit across to the other side, and you've got your sport modes, but you can also change it to media and all that sort of thing. Everything else is pretty typical Porsche, uh, very clean sort of steering wheel, not much clutter around on the spokes, um, little cruise control stalk on a separate uh, stalk down there, and then your drive mode toggle or a switch here on your, on your steering wheel too. But check out the back seats. So this is a little bit tighter. I do have this seat back slightly, but not, you know, overly pushed back. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not very tall. I'm only about 170 centimeters, uh, as you probably heard me say before, but the roof is getting close to my head. It's not touching, um, but it, it's definitely getting close. If you're quite tall, um, you might struggle a little bit in here. Leg room is pretty good though for me. Um, I can put my feet right under the seat as well. Um, so you've got plenty of movement. Um, there isn't a flat floor, which is quite surprising for an electric car because you've got the electric motor in the front and the back. There's not usually a, a drive shaft that goes through the middle, so you don't have to have that hump there, but um, this one does. But it does have available climate control, and this one does have the center seat, although I don't think that would be very comfortable. I will try and sit on it for you. And you do actually sit on it rather than sort of in it. Yeah, I'm very perched up and my head is pretty much touching the ceiling there. But on the outside, uh, this is kind of a grand touring car, I guess. Um, just trying to get my foot back under there. Um, you do have two individual seats and the seats are quite nicely contoured. They've got a bit of side bracing there as well. And then a flip down little console with, uh, with cup holders. And then in the back, you've got a decent sized boot uh, for a sedan um, with an electric motor in the underneath there. You don't get much depth. Um, and then the charging power cords and all that sort of thing. A little spot for those under there as well so they don't move around. You do have two, two quite deep pockets on the sides there and a little 12 volt socket. But the beauty of an electric car is you also have a boot at the front. So what is a bit strange is it's still got a conventional bonnet. So you've got this little, you know, the little lever that you've got to flick over to open the bonnet, um, even though it is a boot. I think they should probably move on from that because it's not as practical as it could be. It doesn't need to have that sort of safety oriented sort of me mechanism to it. Um, but anyway, you've got another little boot there, good enough for a bag, weekend bag or something like that, or even an office bag. Let's hit the road and I'll show you how it goes. First things first, private road, V-Box, let's do some zero to 100 runs. Um, now I was down here the other day, so I've already got uh, some re times recorded, but I'll do it again just to show you. Uh, that's all programmed in. Aircon is off, uh, sport mode or sport plus mode, sorry. Uh, now this car does come with launch control, uh, which is pretty uncommon for a EV. Usually if you put your foot on the brake in an EV, put your foot on the brake and the accelerator at the same time, it sort of just cancels it out. It's like an automatic cutoff switch, only lets you do one or the other. Whereas this, when you have it in Sport Plus mode and you have the stability in PSM Sport, um, it will actually let you build some tension on the brake pedal and then you release the brake and it catapults you off to a uh, rocketing start. Um, I'll try both. I'll try with launch control and then just flattening the throttle and see what it does. It is a pretty hot day today, 28 degrees. Um, but the good thing about an EV is, or one of the benefits of an EV, the temperature doesn't really impact the performance of the car. I'll do a launch control first and then a, uh, a normal flat throttle. Start. 
Out on the brake, launch control activated. Like it really pushes you back in your seat. It's incredible G-force. There we go, that's just done 3.16 seconds. That's pretty quick. Um, it's actually a bit quicker than what I achieved the other day, uh, 3.18 seconds. We'll do it again without the launch control and see what it does. All right, pretty much the same spot, that pole there. Um, and we'll try it without launch control this time. Start, so the aircon is still off. Uh, I've still got it in Sport Plus mode and the stability control is still in PSM mode. actually hurts your neck as you're taking off it's pretty amazing it actually feels like it catapults off even quicker uh, just by nailing the throttle I think that's to do with your well as a driver anyway your foot hit goes down and then the car's gone straight away you know and you just get that instant reaction whereas when you use stability control I mean the launch control you're sort of expecting it to, to build up a bit whereas yeah that is just bang gone you know it's, it's almost completely instant Let's have a look. So that's just done 3.26 seconds that time. So it's only fractionally slower. Um, 3.16 before, 3.26 that time. It's, yeah, it's amazing performance. So what's interesting about that is, uh, this offers, or well, Porsche boasts that this offers repeatable performance, um, which means you can do it again and again, and you'll get the same experience. Um, and yeah, definitely does because the other day we tested this uh, with, battery, with the battery almost full and it did 3.18 seconds and then just, de just then we've done 3.16 seconds with the battery at about halfway or even less than halfway actually. I'm not sure about other manufacturers but um, one springs to mind, Tesla, sorry I don't mean to pick on Teslas here, uh, but just from testing experience um, as the battery uh, level starts to deplete you do start to lose a little bit of performance. It's not much, it's about 0.2 of a second for a zero to 100, for example. Um, but yeah, whereas this is definitely offering repeatable, I mean, you can do it again and again, um, and it will just keep offering the same level of, of excitement, which you'd kind of expect from a Porsche anyway, being a uh, iconic sports car brand. Speaking of the battery, we'll head over to a public charging station now and uh, plug it in. It is only a 50 kilowatt charging station, which, if you're watching this from overseas, that's probably pretty pretty weak. Uh, but in Australia, we're a bit behind with, with stations. Um, some of them are only seven kilowatts, and then there's a few that are 22 kilowatts. So this one that's 50 kilowatts is actually not too bad. Um, there are a few that are 350 kilowatts. Um, they do cost money, um, but they charge it up much, much quicker, obviously. So just carrying on from before where I said I don't really like electric vehicles, um, that's speaking from, you know, someone that lives in Australia um, and, you know, the, the tra charging infrastructure is not there. I totally get that petrol and diesel vehicles are polluting the earth and all of that. I'm not trying to say that that's not happening. Um, just for me, I, I don't like having that timing scheduling issue uh, in my day. Um, but also, I'm a driving enthusiast and I really like, you know, exploring a petrol engine, you know, or a diesel engine's performance. You know, you're using the gears and so on. Um, and just finding the performance and just interacting with the car whereas with an electric car there's not that much interaction you, you feel further away from man and machine sort of relationship than than a combustion engine car in my opinion anyway you're just sort of sitting in this capsule that's you know silently taking you where you need to go um, you don't feel very integral to the driving experience with a Porsche though well that's a bit different because you do have this lovely steering beautiful ride I'll, I'll show you we'll go on a, uh, a nice winding road in a minute um, and we'll check out the uh, the ride control it's, it's an amazing ride I, I can't think of a car that's offered a better ride like it's it catches the bumps and absorbs them really well but then it, you think it's going to bottom out but it doesn't it just sort of it's like it tensions up as the wheel sort of compresses up into the guard it sort of tensions up tensions up at the top and stops it from bottoming out it's it's amazing uh, ride control really amazing and then it's not, you know, you don't have excessive body roll or anything like that. It's, it handles like a proper sports car. It's a really nice handling car. But we'll go out onto a winding road in a minute and I'll show you. I'll put the camera back on my head. We're just about to turn up at the charging station. So I'll just quickly show you how that works. It's pretty straightforward, plugging something in. Um, and I'll just show you sort of, yeah, what the, the range and everything says as it's charging. And then we'll hit the, uh, the winding road. 
hopefully there's no one at the station which is always a bit of a problem and it looks like there is ah, there's a jaguar there so this is another problem too for me as, a, as a, again as a journalist i don't you know own this car so i haven't kept it charged up or anything like that but yeah there's a jaguar i-pace at the uh at the charging station so now i have to sit around and wait um for that car to finish before i can keep going i mean i've got 150 kilometers range i can risk it and and continue driving but the next charging station would probably be 100 kilometers away um so yeah that, that's where it becomes a bit sort of it's range anxiety and that's what people people call it because you you've got this anxiety and you constantly watching how much range you've got um but again if you own the car you just charge it every night even if it's not you know hasn't gone down that far um say 80 percent you just charge it again at night or 70 percent charge it back up to 100 percent or not even 100 percent if you don't want to um and then you you know you're getting that the the kilometers that you need out of it every day anyway now i'll have to play the waiting game and uh and wait for this guy to finish usually with electric cars it's pretty funny um in australia i don't know about overseas but uh they're like your automatic friend electric car uh, owner when you when you rock up to a, a charging station they're always you know very willing to get out and talk to you and talk about your car they probably know more about your electric car than than you do it's it's kind of funny that um i wouldn't call it nerdy but you know you've got that sort of i think people that are bought electric cars they know more about their cars than people that you know general public that buy a petrol car for example um, they really know how it works they know what charging plugs they need and all that sort of thing so it's it's quite interesting but this guy is not actually at his car so hopefully he's not gone for too long Okay, so the guy's just gone now. Not that it's, um, you know, his fault or anything, but that was about an hour wait. Um, but the problem now is I've got to plug it in and wait for it to charge as well. So, yeah, I've got to take this car back today. So I'm just, yeah, trying to weigh it all up. Not weigh it all up, but calculate the whole time of the day and all that sort of stuff. But to charge it up, it's pretty simple. Turn the car off. This guy's decided to park right next to the electric station even though there's like multiple car parks everywhere so this has got two different charging plugs you've got the normal type 2 on this side and then on the other side is a type 2 uh, CCS2 I think they call it um, which you can um, do this little bit at the bottom I think that's for higher power or whatever but um yeah two different options there which is good because a lot of cars only come with one option um so it's good to see that there's two different options there and you just grab the plug and make sure it doesn't slam up against the car that's all right put it on max and then just hit start battery charged at one o'clock so at the moment it's just 10 past 11 so to get it all the way to full it'll take an hour and 50 minutes i'm not going to charge it all the way to full i'll just take it up to about 50 50 percent or maybe 60 percent um, what usually happens in electric cars to save the bat battery you get a, uh, a sort of you know maximum rate up to about 80 percent and then it slows down that last 20 percent just to uh uh, conserve the battery and then once it's charging we can just sit here and watch the gauge um, a little bit boring yes but um, that's just what we have to do uh, obviously you go get a coffee or something like that or go to the shops I'm noticing it's taking about one minute per one percent uh, on the station there it says you probably can't see it but it says it's been charging for three minutes four minutes just ticked over and we, we got here at 33 percent or 34 percent so yeah, that's about, it's about a minute per per 1%. As we've been sitting here, I've just noticed, so these screens are, are pretty cool. If you like screens, you know, it's, it's technology overload here. Um, but one thing I do notice is they do get very dirty. 
Um, so I cleaned it just before to take photos and I've, I haven't even really touched it, but there's fingerprints and things everywhere. It gets really messy pretty quickly. Um, and I know the car designers like to make it look very clean when it's turned off. It's all just black. Um, but yeah, if you don't keep it clean, you turn the car off and you just see all this fingerprints and stuff and dust and stuff everywhere. So that's, you know, kind of negates the, the, the purpose of having it nice and clean in the first place. Okay, so that's up to 71% now. Um, I plugged it in at about 33% and it's taken 46 minutes and I just ticked over to 72%. To stop it, you just hit the stop button. And there's a little button on the uh, control here that lets you release the plug. Make sure that's closed back up, close that, and that's it. And that was free too. So some of the charging stations do cost money, uh, but they do have a bit more power. Um, but whereas this one is completely free at the moment. I think NRMA have said that they will eventually start charging money for that that plug, uh, that sort of station, um, but at the moment, yeah, completely free. I didn't even have to tap anything, didn't have to, yeah, there's no interaction between me and the, that machine apart from the plug into the car. Okay, we can check the battery level here as well, 72%, and that's given us 300 kilometers range. I can't remember what that said when we pulled in here. I think it was about 130 or 140, wasn't it? Um, so we basically doubled our range in about 45 minutes. It's always really sort of eerily quiet when you first drive an electric car but yeah this one does produce a few little noises and whines and so on but um there's also a gear change as well as i said there's it's got a two-speed transmission and then if you put it into sport plus mode which we'll do in a minute um i think that they turn up the uh sort of fake sounds that come into the cabin but they're actually not too bad i'm a I'm not a fan at all of, of these fake sounds that um, some cars produce, combustion engine cars, I mean. Um, but for an electric car, I think you do need something just to give you that sense of, of um, not acceleration, but just accent, the sense of movement. Because sometimes you, you, know, you could forget that you're even moving. Um, if you're looking down or something like that and the car rolls away, or I don't know, just, I think that it, it just is important to have that extra sense um, even though it's not, you know, as nice sound as a flat six revving to 8,000 RPM, for example. When you start to play around with the air conditioning, you'll notice the, the range will change. So I'll put the air conditioning on, and it's at 299, aircon on, 290. So we've just lost nine kilometers range just by having the aircon on. And it's on the Aircon Eco as well. If I change that, or turn that off, it will probably go down again. 282. Um, that's, I'm not sure if you can see it, but just there, 282. It's gone down from 299 to 282 just by having the air conditioning on. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how much power an air conditioning unit, even though it is different in this car, uh, an air conditioning unit requires when driving it on a, a combustion engine. So you do actually, Get, uh, lose a bit of power when you're when you got it on just up here there's a big steep hill um, and I'll try and give you an idea of the response of this powertrain because it just leaves any combustion engine for dead you, you can't compare um, even the most powerful you know supercharged V8s or twin turbocharged V8s this you just put your foot down and it's goes straight away you don't have to wait for any revs or anything like that it's just as as immediate as you can push your foot on the pedal like it's literally like that which is obviously very entertaining um it is a bit of a gimmick kind of but um when you've got this level of performance i think it's um goes beyond gimmick and it's start to become sort of surreal <laughs> it's uh yeah it's pretty amazing So in normal mode, I'll just slow down a bit. No cars behind me, I'll slow down to about 60. Try and let you see the speedo. But I'll just push my foot, say, you know, about an inch or something or a centimeter, and we can just see how quickly it responds. This is a, a, a decent steep hill. It does get a bit steeper, but I'll just show you on this one. This is starting to rise up now. So 60 kilometers an hour. 
80 kilometers an hour <laughs> like and that was just an inch of throttle too i mean if i pushed it all the way it would have pushed it you know a bit harder but it's um yeah crazy performance it just doesn't compare with a combustion engine at all around corners the the normal mode the normal suspension mode the suspension is probably a little bit too soft um very very comfortable uh but yeah it's great that you have such versatility that you can just flick it into sport mode and you get sport suspension um and you can definitely feel it's it's a lot more responsive um and it doesn't sort of not that it has much body roll at all um, but you can kind of feel that it's it's definitely reduced oh and by the way i've just put it into sport mode and you may have noticed the range drop about 15 kilometers there too so this is a really steep hill and we'll just slow right down there's no cars behind us i'm going now 50 kilometers an hour 40 kilometers an hour so this in a petrol car you'd have to change if i floored it it'll change down a gear then the engine would have to rev up to get you get you going but watch this so 30 kilometers an hour straight up the hill lots of g-force up to 100 kilometers an hour just like that up a very very steep hill <laughs> like it's yeah you can't it's you can't even compare you can't argue with that at all um, against a petrol car it just would not be able to do that okay we'll just up the pace a bit there's a couple of corners coming up here that we can test the handling. Very nice steering, like it's um, it's hard to explain Porsche steering, but you get perfect amount of feedback. You always know what the wheels are doing, but it's not touchy like some cars or some sports cars. It still feels very solid, you know, it's gradual. It's not super, you know, twitchy or anything like that. It's just a perfect mix. Feels very fluid as well. This is a heavy car. It's about 2.3 tons, which is um, yeah, that's pretty extreme for a for a, what would you call it, large sedan. Um, it's, that's that's like a big Range Rover or something like that. But it seems to hide the weight pretty well. Like it doesn't feel really heavy, especially with that immediate throttle response. Um, you don't get that sort of sense that it's it's quite a sluggish or a bit of big big hefty thing Around corners the sport mode definitely helps out a lot um, Because it just tensions that suspension up a bit braces you when you're going around the corners left and right or whatever um, And stops the sort of very slight momentum shift as you're going from left and right quickly so up here we've got some nice big sweeping bends couple of bumps yeah nowhere near bottoming out or anything like that good brakes excellent brakes in fact um, as you'd expect from a Porsche so you don't have to worry about there being too much acceleration performance and then not enough braking performance it's, it stops really really well put it into sport plus mode now and you'll see if you can hear the difference in the sort of artificial sound coming through you can sort of just hear this sound if I give it some yeah it kind of sounds like a like a train or some sort of ride at a theme park that's about to take off like a roller coaster or something in sport plus mode the suspension is even stiffer again goes into a sport plus mode and then it really hunkers down and um and handles very sharply awesome power delivery um you can use that that throttle response to actually help you get around the corner um in fact there is a little diagram here we can have a look at the all-wheel control I'm not sure if you can see that, but it sort of gives you an idea of where the power is going. Um, but yeah, as you're going around the corner, you can almost give it a, you know, not plant it, but give it a lot of lot of pedal, and uh, it'll sort of sort itself out and throw you around the corner. So it might give more power to a right uh, a right hand wheel around a left hand bend, for example, um, to sort of push you around the corner. I'll try it around this one. So I'll slow right down, give it a lot of power. 
and yeah, huge G-force and it just keeps going around the corner. Um, so in that sense, it's definitely a, uh, a sports car and an entertaining one as well. You just can't get away from that that throttle response though, like the and the power, the sheer level of power, 500 kilowatts um, or maximum 500 kilowatts. It's just, yeah, like enormous thrust. It's crazy. With these different driving modes, I think it's an even more versatile car than any of you know sort of Porsche's Porsche's other models. Well, maybe not as versatile as their SUVs, I guess. Um, but yeah, they do make a big difference, these, these driving modes. So at the moment, Sport Plus, you can feel the bumps. It's not rigid, like it's not bone jarring, um, but I can definitely feel the bumps and get a very good sense of how the wheels, are, the tires are handling. Whereas when you flick it back to normal mode, it sort of becomes, yeah, lo lots more relaxed and cushy. Just down here is a nice little sort of corkscrew, I suppose you'd call it. Um, but it's a really good handling little section that I like to use to test the different cars that we uh, that we review. I'll put it back into sport mode. Just at the end of the uh, the turn, there's a bump, and it, and it really throws off cars. Um, some cars, the stability control light will flicker even when you're not going very fast, whereas other cars with good suspension will catch the bump and it will go straight through. Um, but we go down here into the left. When we come back around to the left, we'll hit this bump. I'll show you. on the brakes awesome turn in definitely got I feel like I'm in full control of the car I don't feel nervous at all and just around here there's a bump into this next corner already watch this beautiful so the, 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 the mud flap or something did go and scrape the the ground there but the car was always stable it didn't throw it off or anything like that uh, whereas some cars you go through there um, not even you know going very fast at all and it will um, you know send the car doesn't really know what to do sort of recalculates and sends some stability control grabs the back wheel or something like that um, whereas this is yeah perfectly went absolutely perfectly through there would I buy one well I don't want to buy an electric car at the moment as I said I'm gonna I want to keep buying petrol cars or diesel cars um, until they until they stop making them um, just because I've got an appreciation for my background as a mechanic um, I've got an appreciation for the sort of engineering and you know human achievement of making the uh, the combustion engine um, as well as the excitement that, that, that it brings the revs the sound and all that sort of thing but in terms of electric vehicles this is definitely the best one I've ever driven easily easily the best one I've ever driven um, the performance and the the driver's interaction or the driver's entertainment level is very much you know right near Porsche's flagship sports cars like it's, it's right there and because it is so blisteringly blisteringly fast in a straight line it's um it sort of you know nudges ahead in other areas uh, that it might lose in, in some other areas such as sound we will be putting together our usual full written review on the website soon and of course our 0 to 100 video for you in the meantime, thanks for watching.